The Botany Barrier VVA-14 was a wing and ground effect aircraft developed in the Soviet Union during the early 1970s. Designed to be able to take off from the water and fly at high speed over long distances, it was to make true flights at high altitude, but also have the capability of flying efficiently just above the sea surface, using aerodynamic ground effect. A ground effect vehicle, also called a wing in ground effect, ground effect craft, wingship, flare craft or a craniplan, is a vehicle that is designed to attain sustained flight over a level surface by making use of ground effect, the aerodynamic interaction between the wings and the surface. A ground effect vehicle needs some forward velocity to produce lift dynamically and the principal benefit of operating a wing in ground effect is to reduce its lift dependent drag. Placing the same wing near a surface such as the water or the ground has the effect of greatly increasing the aspect ratio, but without having the complications associated with a long and slender wing, so that the short stubs on a GEV can produce just as much lift as the much larger wing on a transport aircraft, though it can do this only when close to the Earth's surface. Once sufficient speed has built up, some GEVs may be capable of leaving ground effect and functioning as normal aircraft until they approach their destination. Although the GEV may look similar to the seaplane and share many technical characteristics, it is generally not designed to fly out of ground effect. Given similar hull size and power, and depending on its specific design, the lower lift-induced drag of a GEV, as compared to an aircraft of similar capacity, will improve its fuel efficiency and, up to a point, its speed. Since most GEVs are designed to operate from water, accidents and engine failure typically are less hazardous than in a land-based aircraft, but the lack of altitude control leaves the pilot with fewer options for avoiding collision, and to some extent that discounts such benefits. Low altitude brings high-speed craft into conflict with ships, buildings and rising land, which may not be sufficiently visible in poor conditions to avoid, and GEVs may be unable to climb over or turn sharply enough to avoid collisions. The Russian rules for classification and construction of small type A Krana plans is a document upon which most GEV design is based. German engineer Gunther Jörg who had worked on Alexei Yev's first designs and was familiar with the challenges of GEV design, developed a GEV with two wings in a tandem arrangement, the Yerg II. It was the third, manned, tandem airfoil boat, named Skimafoil, which was developed during his consultancy period in South Africa. Gunther Jörg who was specialist and insider of German airplane industry up from 1963 and a colleague of Alexander Lipkisch and Hanno Fischer as well, was founded with a fundamental knowledge of wing and ground effect physics, as well as results of fundamental tests under different conditions and designs having begun in 1960. GEVs developed since the 1980s have been primarily smaller craft designed for the recreational and civilian ferry markets. In Korea, Wingship Technology Corporation has developed and tested a 50-seat passenger version of a GEV named the WSH-500. The designers Bert Rutten in 2011 and Korolov in 2015 have shown GEV projects. The VVA-14 was designed by Italian-born designer Robert Buttoni in answer to a perceived requirement to destroy United States Navy Polaris missile submarines. Botany, in collaboration with the Beriev Design Bureau intended to develop the prototype VVA-14 in three phases. The VVA-14M1 was to be an aerodynamics and technology test bed, initially with rigid pontoons on the ends of the central wing section, and later with these replaced by inflatable pontoons. The VVA-14M2 was to be more advanced with two starting engines to blast into the cavity under the wing to give lift and later with a battery of lift engines to give VTOL capability, and with fly-by-wire flight controls. The VVA-14M3 would see the VTOL vehicle fully equipped with armament and with the Burevistnik computerized anti-submarine warfare system, Boro-1 magnetic anomaly detector and other operational equipment including the development of the small prototype B-1 wing in ground effect aircraft, the first VVA-14 prototype was completed in 1972. Its first flight was from a conventional runway on the 4th of September 1972. In 1974, the inflatable pontoons were installed, though their operation caused many problems. 
flotation and water taxi tests followed, culminating in the start of flight testing of the amphibious aircraft on the 11th of June 1975. The inflatable pontoons were later replaced by rigid pontoons, while the fuselage was lengthened and the starting engines added. This incarnation was given the designation 14M1P. However, the bureau supplying the intended battery of 12 road 3635 PR lift engines did not deliver, and this made VTOL testing impossible. After Bhutani's death in 1974, the project slowed and eventually drew to a close, the aircraft having conducted 107 flights, with a total flight time of 103 hours. The aircraft still resides at the museum in a dismantled state.